Welcome to the Financial Fun Podcast with your host, Tammy Johnston. This is where Tammy talks with business owner parents and grandparents about the interesting and important subject of money. We promise this to be an interesting and open discussion, as that's how we learn best. And now, here's your host, author of the Financial Foundations. Financial Foundations is a series of books to teach kids about money, goal setting, and living a balanced life. Find out more at financialfund.ca. Here's Tammy Johnston. First things first, I would like to thank all of my listeners that have subscribed and reviewed my podcast and invite you to subscribe and review if you haven't yet. I appreciate you helping us to get the word out and making financial literacy a safe and welcoming subject for kids and adults. Second, please check out my podcast website, financialfund.ca, where you will be able to access past shows, find out more about me and our guests, as well as purchase the beautifully illustrated Financial Foundations books that teach kids about money in a fun, healthy, and holistic way. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us. Our guest today is Mr. Guy Ward. Hi, Guy. Hey, how are you, Tommy? I'm doing really well. I'm doing really well. How about you? Good, thank you. So you want to tell us a little bit about yourself so our guests know sure. who we're listening to? Yeah, so my name, as Tommy just said, is Guy Ward. So I'm a mortgage broker with TMG The Mortgage Group, and my my business name is Guy The Mortgage Guy. So I've been a mortgage broker for a few years now, um, and I obviously help um, residential buyers um, find the, the property that they're um, looking for with the right mortgage. And I have a family of six children. Um, and we, we originally emigrated to Canada back in 2004. And at the time we had four kids. And then we decided to add a couple more to it. So like I said, we've got six kids now. So we're a pretty big family. So um, we often have money things come up and situations and discussions like that with with having so many in our um, household well you you, de- you definitely have a healthy sized family yes that's for sure <laughs> but i've i've met them and all, you you and your lovely wife are doing a great job your kids are awesome but thank you oh yes. man i can't imagine the amount of noise in your house <laughs> yeah it does get pretty crazy at times that's for sure it does um does get very busy, but um, it's all um, it's all good fun. So. Cause you you have five boys, don't you? Yeah, yes. Yeah, so we got five boys and one girl. So my my eldest, um, he just graduated high school, and then my my daughter, she is um, she just finished grade ten, and then I've got twin boys who are twelve, um, another boy who's nine, and then our youngest boy, um, he is going to be seven next week. So. Your 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 yeah. your wife is a brave brave woman. <laughs> yes, very. Yes, she is very brave. So, what are some of the things like? So, you you grew up and your wife grew up in England and actually started your family over there. What are some of the things that you're noticing about many that are different from back home in England to now home in Canada? Yeah, I mean, we we did. We both obviously grew up in in the UK, um, and. Um, you know, obviously money, you know, in itself has changed um, since obviously when we were growing up. And, and even in the time, because um, we've been in Canada for 12 years now. So I think even in the 12 years that we've been here, um, money has changed again. And um, and even 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 with the difference with the UK. Um, the, the one thing that I noticed that when we first moved here is that um Money seems to be unsecured money, I should say. So things like line of credits and things like that seems to be a lot more prevalent here um, in Canada. It seems to be a lot easier to get credits. Um, and um, and certainly things like revolving line of credits, we don't have in the UK. That was something, unless it does now, it, but certainly when we were there, oh. even as adults, um, a line of credit isn't something that exists, whether it's on a house or not on a house. Um, you know, you have your mortgage and if you need to get a loan for something, then you get a set payment loan. Um, there isn't, um, there would, there didn't used to be anyways, anything as a, as a revolving line of credit. You just had your set loan, whether it was for a new car or whether it was to do some work, you know, to your house or whatever. Um, so, you know, it's, um, so there are some differences and, um, 
I do feel um, when it comes to a secure, especially I think a secured line of credit when you're using it as part of your mortgage can be a dangerous thing if you're not using it properly. Um, because um, I do see a lot of people that are using the product, but they're not using it as they should be. Um, so they end up um, still having a lot of debts and not a huge amount of you know equity that they should be having in the house. Um, so there's definitely some differences between from what we um, knew in the UK when we left there um, to kind of coming here in Canada and um, adjusting to how credit works here and, um, you know, and, and, and that kind of stuff. That's that's quite eye opening because, yeah, even we've had we've had credit cards and line of credits around for all of my career. And I've been doing this for 23 years. But I remember back when I was a kid. And my mom wanted to get um, a Sears card back in the early 80s. And I remember her being so bloody mad because she couldn't get the card from Sears without my dad signing off on it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, yeah, of course. Right. Because I I guess back then there was still the kind of the, you know, sexist way oh, that things sexist. worked. Yeah. And I, yeah. I remember my mom being like fit to be tied. She was so mad because. My mom is the one that had the full-time job. My dad had his own business and stuff, and she right. was the one that was making the money and stuff like that. Yeah. And I just remember her. I wasn't very old. I was like nine, I think, when it when yeah. this happened, and she was just losing it over that. She yeah. still won't chop at shears to this day. Yeah, well, no, I mean, rightly so. It's um, it's changing. And, and like I said, I do remember my father um, getting his getting a credit card and I'm thinking it was probably early 80s, I think, was when they first had a credit card, um, you know, from the bank, etc. cetera. But, um, you know, e- even even when I became an adult, you know, when I was kind of 18, 19 years old, um, obviously credit cards had been around for a while, but it was still relatively, certainly in the UK anyways, it was still relatively not an easy thing to, to necessarily get, um, whereas pretty much nowadays they pretty much give them to anybody for the most part. Oh, yeah, they send, so, they send them to the, the mail. That when, when your kid start off in, in college or university the first week, they're inundated by nothing but credit cards. In fact, they're starting to target them at 16 now. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, that's, um, that's ridiculous to, to do that. So, so, yeah, I do remember getting my first credit card, but it wasn't until I was – I'm thinking about 22, 23 was when I got my first credit card. I was already working full time, um, but I've been working working full time for a few years um, before I actually um, and I, and I and obviously it was a long time ago. And I I'm, I'm guessing there was probably a very small limit on it of maybe I don't know three or four hundred pounds or something. Not not much. So, um, but I do I do actually remember getting that um, that credit card for the very first time. But like I said, I was 23, maybe 24 years old, and of course, like you said, now they're pretty much giving them to anybody, even from the um, from the age of 16. So, well, with with you having the two two older kids, like you've got the one your son that just graduated, and your your right. daughter is in high school and stuff. Have have they started asking you any questions about the credit cards or any other financial questions? Like younger kids, they may or may not ask, but you have you have kids that are very much approaching the time where they're going to be on their own. Yeah, no, we've um, not so much with my daughter, but my eldest, he, um, I do remember having our first questions um, he had in regards to a um, a debit card because um, I remember when he was 12 or 13 and he was saying to me that some of his friends were using their parents' debit card. The parents would give them the debit card, I guess, while at school so they could, I don't know, you know, get some lunch or whatever, which to me seemed really strange. I was very surprised that, um, a 12 or a 13 year old should be using a debit card. Um, but, um, so I remember we had conversations, um, regarding that. Um, and then, um, Caleb, he got his, um, checking account when he first started working, which was probably a year and a half coming up two years ago. So he got a, a checking account and his savings account all opened at the same time. Um, and, um, and so he uses that, but we haven't, we've talked about credit cards, but he, um, we haven't actually discussed about, um, him having one because there's no need for him to have one. Um, you know, he has his money that he gets paid and and that's all the money he has. He doesn't, at at this age, he doesn't need to be borrowing money. Um, you know, if, um, if he doesn't have the money to buy something, then, well, he has to wait for his next paycheck. So. 
that's that's kind of you know how it works for now. But at some point, yes, in the next year or two, I'm guessing that he's gonna, um, especially the longer he banks at Scotia, I'm sure at some point they're gonna be offering him a credit card. Oh yes, they're gonna be hitting on him soon enough. But yeah. with you being a mortgage broker and dealing with people's credit and stuff all the time and, and credit rating and all that, have you ever talked about credit rating and stuff with your kids or have they ever asked? Yeah, um, no, they've never asked, but I have talked, again, with my eldest two um, around um, credit and how it works and credit bureaus and, and even my wife because, you know, credit bureaus, even for us working in industry, is still a mysterious thing as to how they come up with your scores. Um, and it's, you know, I, I work with people that are, that don't, um, that aren't mortgage brokers. They're actual credit experts. So that's all they do. They just spe- specialize in helping people with their credits, um, either fixing it or repairing it. And, and, and even those guys are telling me that sometimes the, you know, they still just don't understand how Equifax is coming up with, with the way they report and their score that you get. Um, so I don't think anyone will really fully understand exactly how they work, but there are some very basic rules that you, that you have to follow. And that was, um, some of those basic rules that I've, I've told, I've told my eldest children, um, you know, ready for when they do eventually take on some credit at some point in the future. But, um, it's, um, you know, that I, I do find that, um, there's a lot of miss, a lot of bad information out there about credit reports and how you should handle your credit. Um, and I think that's part of the problem as to why um, so many people have bad credit, but also the fact that um, it just seems more, a lot more common nowadays that people are quite happy to kind of just take on, you know, more debts. And, you know, at some point it just gets too much for them. Well, it, it's so, it's so easy. It's, gotten so much more expensive just to live i found right because you can have people that are actually doing a a good job like i've been i've been doing this professionally for over 23 Mm. years and i have people and it's not like they're going out shopping all the time or or they're even wasting money but all their expenses have gone up the housing expenses the utility expenses the vehicle expenses yeah. Even if you don't have a vehicle, your transit expenses. I think when I first moved to Calgary, if I wanted a monthly bus pass, it was like thirty five dollars, and yeah. now it's a hundred now. Yeah, it's a hundred dollars now. That's not what? that long, and it's just gone up and up and up. And then you're talking about food costs and absolutely everything. So even if you're living just okay, keeping everything the same, if your income is not going up to meet that. People yeah. are falling behind. They're going, well, what do I do? Well, it's so easy to get. It's so easy to get credit. And then well, and that. Yeah, no, exactly. No, you're absolutely right. Because even in the 12 years we've been here, we've seen how much more expensive Calgary has become. Um, just like many other cities, right? It's, it's yeah. obviously not just here, but like many places. And, um, and and that's the thing, right? That there is a there's a big difference between people that are really doing their best to try and keep their head, you know, afloat and trying to, you know, make sure that all their, their bills are paid without having to use, um, you know, credit cards and line of credits. Yeah. But, yeah, you're right. Unfortunately, sometimes, you know, for some people, there's just nothing they can do. They have to use a credit card to maybe pay for a bill or to, you know, to buy some food, you know, groceries for the week. Um, so that um, that unfortunately does happen. Where, on, of course, on the flip side, there's also a lot of people that are making a lot of money but yet they're still spending a lot of money and they're still racking up their credit, you know, their debt, you know, whether it's credit card and, and line of credits and that kind of thing, which um, they need to kind of just rein in and get into a more manageable level. Yeah. Be, be aware of all the stuff that they're spending their money on. So right. if, if you could pass on, like you said, three bits of information to, to your kids going, OK, I'm, I'm sending you off to the world. You've graduated school and stuff three things about money that you want to make sure 100% that they've got and you go, okay, I did my job as a parent. What would you want your kids to know? Yeah. So, excuse me. The first thing would be, um, would be to save. So, you know, and I, I know, you know, certainly older you get and the more responsibilities and, and bills and things you take on, but certainly in an earlier age, um, especially when you're still living at home when, and you're working and you can afford to save money, 
Uh, my first thing is always to save. You've got to have um, you've got to have something as savings, even you know whether it's five or ten percent of your paycheck, or you know some months it's a bit more if you can. Uh, you need to have some savings, um, even even if you don't have anything in mind as to what you're going to use them for in the future. Um, and then the other big thing for me is um, to start your RSP, your retirement fund, um, because that was one of my regrets that. Um, and this was obviously in the UK, but, you know, when I was 18, 19 and I was, you know, working full time, um, it just never really occurred to me that at, at that age, uh, you know, I was you know, having lots of fun and, you know, going out all the time. You know, obviously I wasn't married, didn't have any kids and kind of no real responsibilities and still living at home. But I wish someone had actually sat down with me and said, look, you need to you know, start your retirement fund, your, your RSP, your pension, et cetera, because, you know, even. Even if you can start at the age of 18, 19 or 20, even just 20 to $50 a month, whatever you can afford, would certainly go a long way um, to when you eventually retire at the age of, you know, 60 or 65. Yeah. Putting the power of compound interest in your favor for a change. Yeah, exactly. So 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 savings, you know, I think savings has to be drilled in from I mean, a 10 year old doesn't need to worry too much about an RSP, but um, but certainly um, but savings. But building a habit. Well, that's the thing, right? And I think you do that by savings, right? If you're already saving money into a savings account, then it's not such a big thing to overcome mentally for you to start putting money away into a retirement, um, you know, plan account um, because you've already been doing it for a few years for savings. So I think savings um, for now in the future and retirement, obviously, for the future are two big things for them. Mm-hmm. And then the third thing for me to be uh, – for my kids would be about credit is just don't be stupid, manage your credit, only take it if you really have to. And, and, you know, just be sensible. And, um, and that's, you know, and you can go into more, de- I would obviously go into more detail about that specific credit in terms of making sure you repay as you do. And, and, and other basic points of making sure that you have a healthy credit report. Um, but those would be for me would be saving, retiring and, um, and credit. Yeah, the, re- the retiring one, that's going to become more and more interesting because, well, people are living a whole heck of a lot water, longer. And when when you have a life expectancy in like Canada of like 83 right now, what is an 18-year-old going to be thinking about that? So well, how, do we, how do we get that through to them is, is the question with some of them, especially if you have kids that like to be spending and the idea of, well, what do you mean I have to wait for like 65 years for this money? Well, and that's and that's the thing. And my eldest, he, I mean, he definitely does like to spend. He does save, so I'll give him credit. He does have a savings account, and you know, we put his. He's already been paying taxes. We do the tax refund. Every, you know, do his taxes every year, and he gets a bit of refund, and he puts that into savings. You know, amongst other things. So he's he's certainly. I'm hoping that he's gonna you know keep improving. Um, so he he's getting there, but um, but yes, for him, I mean, you know, like I said, he's. You know, he's turning 18 in September, so retirement for him is obviously a long way off. But, you know, as I kind of try to, you know, ingrain in him is that, you know, it is a long way off. But, you know, if you start putting money into a retirement fund now, it will make your life so much easier than waiting until you're 25 or 30 years, you know, 30 years old and then starting it. You know, so it's, you know, and and for some kids, right, that's, you know, some will um, will still hold off and, and others will kind of bite the bullet and, you know, and start the retirement fund. Do you, do you find, like I said, because you, you've got the whole whole brood and you've got one that's been working for a few years. And I, I would think that your younger kids look up to him as being the big brother and stuff. Are they noticing what, how he's looking after the money and having the job and stuff and asking any questions of him or um, of you and your wife I, I, about what's going on with him? No, I mean, they, I mean, they do notice that he obviously, um, because, you know, kids are kids, right? They always, at some point, they're always going to ask for something, mm-hmm. you know, whether it's a, a new hockey stick or something like that. They're always going to ask for some of your toy. Um, and, you know, we're, we're always, well, you know, when's your birthday or, you know, when's Christmas next or, you know, depending on what, on what's going on. But, but yes, I mean, they do see that he has things that he wants. And he doesn't have to wait for his birthday and he doesn't have to wait for Christmas. 
And they understand that the only reason he gets to have those things is because he's working. He has a job. So even though we, we told the children that, yes, he is spending his money on things that he wants for himself, he is also putting some of that money away into a savings account as well. So they uh, they do they do notice it and it has you know come up in discussions. And then of course if he wants to keep them quiet, then he just takes them down to the store and buys them candy. And then they're <laughs> right, like, well, he goes so far, doesn't yeah, it? <laughs> exactly. And they're like, okay, well we don't care. That's fine. Because so. oh, that's, that's the way it that's works cute. when you're a six year old, right? So you can be easily bribed. Yes, you can be easily bribed, and I'm sure, like I said, there must be a little, at least a little bit of hero worship, I'm sure, along with yes. a lot of ribbing and, and doing what they can to annoy their older brother at the same time. Exactly, exactly. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. It's been great talking with you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. All right. Have a good day. You too. Before we leave each other, I would ask all of you listening to please subscribe to and rate my podcast. A review would be most appreciated and feedback is always welcome. Whether it be a comment, future topic suggestions, and or questions you or your kids would like to have answered in the Ask Tammy column on the financialfund.ca website. Please feel free to check me out on Facebook at Financial Foundation's Children's Books, on Twitter at Financial Fun, and Instagram at Financial.Fun. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Financial Fun Podcast. Join Tammy Johnston again next week. For more information, please visit financialfun.ca.